Hey, good mm. morning, everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, today, guys, I'm going to um, bring some video over here. The guy who nailed pool markets who started 2023. You are going to hear, and then you see what is going on with uh, mining stock. So, I will play a small thing and then I will talk more about the stock that this is going to moon because. Uh, because let's go here I want to show you before I record the, the video uh, we want to see Apple Apple I did, I did video here Apple look like we need Apple concert pack before failing you know and uh, mm. the another thing is dollar dollar is dumping right now which is telling us stock is, is ready to bullish today guys we are going to moon today so everything set up uh, fix also is losing uh, momentum also and uh, let's go to the video listen to the video guys remember i better share this one for you if you didn't watch it can you listen wrong except for that guy funstrat's tom lee aka the oracle of optimism aka the guy who got it right, a.k.a. Tom Lee, not the drummer. He predicted the S&P 500 would end the year at 4,750. That means that if the S&P, folks, falls just a tiny five points next week, we got four days of trading left in the year, Tom could literally be exactly right. Wouldn't that be something? So let's bring in Tom, who, you know, you can smile. It's kind of the, the Tom Lee version of a smile, but, you, you know, you got it really right, and the basic question is how? What did you see that all these really nice, by the way, but really highly paid and really wrong strategists at the big houses got got it wrong? Uh, hi, Brian. Thanks for that intro. Um, I think there were two things that we, dif we were different from the street. The first is we didn't think inflation would take a year, but take a decade to defeat. I think many were bracing for 10 years of Fed fighting inflation so stocks would get stuck. And the second was because of the inverted yield curve, many were predicting a hard landing in 2023. Our view was that inflation was going to fall like a rock this year, and the Fed therefore could take its foot off the fight, and that economic resilience and the fact that companies were bracing for this storm of hikes actually could avoid a recession. And so I, I think that kept us optimistic and that stocks would look like 1982 and rebound to all-time highs very but, quickly, which it looks like it's happened. Uh, so again, not to be little, but, but why did you think that inflation was going to drop? Because if that is the basis of your thesis, others also got that wrong. What did you see in the data that made you think when things were just cooking inflation-wise the beginning of the year that they would slow down? Uh, well, Brian, it's, it's a little... Uh, what, what, what our team did was we rejiggered inflation and, and identified that 86% of all this rise in core inflation was coming from housing and cars, including the fact that super core was rising. Almost all that was auto insurance, auto repair, auto leasing. So we, we realized that this was all just following goods pricing, that car prices were set to fall and that would pull down inflation. It looks like that's kicking in now. And that housing just needed to get towards a 3 to 4% annualized rate and that would get you back to where you need to be to get to 2% core inflation. So our view is it's not about travel and it's not about health insurance. It's really about cars and housing getting back to normal. And, and that's the trajectory we've been seeing. I, I think the market's recognizing that view, but we, we spent most of the last 18 months arguing that view. What are you looking at for next year, Tom? I, I think it's going to feel uh, like a lot of tailwinds coming together because we know the Fed is going to be supportive. Uh, managing the business cycle instead of fighting inflation. And we, we've we identified reasons for capital spending to pick up next year, including that huge gap between soft and hard data. And that should lead to EPS surprise. And then mortgage rates, we think, could drop towards low fives, maybe even fours next year. And that would be stimulative to the consumer. So it to me, it feels like it could be an early cycle year that really benefits financials and small caps. But you don't see S&P, the S&P 500 gaining another 20%, do you? Uh, it's possible, um, but that's not our base case. You know, we think it's going to gain at least 10% towards 5,200. 
but it, it probably means you first consolidate a lot of this parabolic rise in the first half, you know, so maybe we fall to 4,300, but then we rally pretty hard into 5,200 by year end. But you think that small caps could outperform the large caps next year? Did I hear you right? That's right. Yeah, I think small caps might even just rise every month next year because uh, on a price-to-book basis, they're back to 1999 levels relative to the S&P, and that was a launch point where small caps outperformed for 12 consecutive years. So I, I think we're entering a period where small caps and market breadth are going to expand, and that's going to be good for stock pickers because they can buy companies they like, and, and you're going to have a, a decent earnings backdrop as well. Yeah, there's a lot of companies out there, and I'm, we, we, we're not allowed to own individual companies. I can own index funds and, and ETFs and mutual funds. That's pretty much about it. But when I look at some of these screeners that I'll do just on my because I'm bored and I'm boring, <sighs> I'm like, man, there's a lot of seemingly really good growth companies that are trading at like four times earnings in small caps. They're That's really right. just left on the trash heap. That's right. I mean, the money's been star uh, equities have been starved of inflows. You know, retail investors pulled money out of stocks this year, and in fact, the S and P X Fang is trading at 15 times forward earnings. I mean, that itself is a pretty reasonable multiple. But then when you look at the S and P 600, which is a, a small cap index, you know, you're at 12 times. So you're you're absolutely right. Small caps are pretty attractive. Are there times when you would love? So thank you so much, guys. So you hear the small cap. Is going to pump 2024. That's the important thing. Uh, bull markets already started, and um, when you see Tesla also is a breakout, it's loading, and uh, Tesla is already breaking out. So that's why you see something like Neo. Neo is loading right now, and uh, this is the right now, right time, guys, now to identify the small cap stocks which is already down there so new is breaking out so you need i think uh, if you stop you need to watch new very closely new tesla raytheon so but uh, you need to see the other member stock like GameStop, uh yeah GameStop course amc i don't know amc Aaron finished AMC, so you see Rivian still uh, holding strong up there, and um, we are on bull market. So guys, when you see dollar uh, weakness, that is very great. See the monthly cap, guys. It has a tall green candlestick, red candlestick, which is showing us uh, we are likely to see dollar go back to ninety dollar. So. Thank you so much. That was the video and uh, have a nice day.